My name is Ah Piao, a woman who was scammed to northern Myanmar by Hauga in order to make money. In order to survive and return, she struggled to play the role he loved in front of Hauga. Startled step by step, I wandered around the gates of hell one after another, finally receiving the favor of heaven. Chapter 1 First Arrival in Northern Myanmar You are listening at NovelFull.audio Brother Hao, don't do it. I shouted so hard that my throat was almost hoarse. Hao Gu, no, please, no. No. Ah Piao, live well. Standing on the fishing boat, Hauga turned around and jumped into the cold river in front of him. With a loud crash, my legs immediately softened until the police pulled me up from the ground. Attention everyone, the suspect has jumped into the river and the current situation is unknown. Please contact the lifeguard as soon as possible to carry out the salvage. I have always dreamed that Hauga could live, but since the arrest ended that day, I have never heard from him again, and no one knows whether he is alive or dead. Since then, there has been a lack of a decisive and evil demon in northern Myanmar. I woke up from a nightmare again and touched a pillow soaked in tears. To be honest, I still don't know if my decision was wrong or right. From a legal perspective, my actions are indeed right, but why do I always feel like I betrayed Brother Hao? In fact, even if I didn't choose to cooperate with the police at that time, it shouldn't have been difficult for me to escape from northern Myanmar with my resources back then. But I chose to be resolute and righteous, because I wanted to save myself and also save Brother Hao, so as not to let him continue to make mistakes. However, from a certain perspective, my approach doesn't seem entirely right either. Sometimes I wonder if I hadn't betrayed Brother Hao in the first place, I wouldn't have forced him to throw himself into the river. So I have a certain responsibility for his death, which is why I still have nightmares all day long after leaving this mortal hell in northern Myanmar. Actually, a long time ago, I had an idea to express everything I had experienced in northern Myanmar in written form. Of course, I did write about it, but due to some platform restrictions, I was locked up in a dark room. When the editor of Seven Cat contacted me and learned about my situation, she told me that if I still wanted to write about those memories, I would try Seven Cat. At first, I resisted because I was worried that like the tomato platform, after working hard to code tens of thousands of words, they would silently block me. But I really want to talk to everyone about those past events and tell them what North Myanmar looks like in my eyes, because I have been there for ten years and have the most say. What gold is everywhere, beautiful women are like clouds, handsome men are in groups, I can only say he he who believes who is a fool. This is clearly a place where you can never go back once you come. So don't come, don't think about getting rich overnight. There's no such thing as pie falling from the sky, and even if there is, it will definitely not fall on your head because you don't have such good luck. No matter what kind of powerful person you are in China, you have to be an obedient dog with your tail tucked in. As rumored online, even if Sun Wukong comes here, he will have to be played with like a monkey, and if the bull demon king comes, he will have to plow two miles of land. If it were by Gu Jing, either he would wander in the gentle countryside of these big shots night and night, or he would obediently become a lotus official. If you dare not obey and directly break your legs, it is light. For these, it is definitely not sensationalism. Everything that happens here every day will overturn your cognition, beyond the limits of humanity, it can be said that there is no limit or bottom line. And the reason why I can sit here and scathe and tell stories to everyone is that I am fortunate and lucky, and most importantly, I have the protection of a wealthy brother. Although I didn't fall directly into the darkness like other girls in northern Myanmar, I also paid a lot of costs for it. For example, all my first time was plundered by that man named Ah Hao. Although I am a respected female demon in northern Myanmar, I can only hold my tail and be an obedient and obedient little wild cat in front of Brother Hao. To Hauga, his words are true, because I have seen his warmest side, like the winter sun shining on the lake. I have also seen his most beastly side, like a greedy demon, licking my weak and helpless self. I both love and fear him, love is true love, and I once shed tears for him all night. 
I'm also really afraid, I tremble with every look in his eyes. Regarding me and Brother Howe, as well as my thrilling decade in northern Myanmar, every time I think about it, it still feels like a nightmare. I have seen many psychologists, but I still cannot express the secrets in my heart one by one. So after careful consideration, I decided to set off again and type out everything that was unbearable through the keyboard. One is to commemorate the ten years of love between me and Brother Howe, the other is to vent my inner pain, and the third is to serve as a warning to all those who want to get rich in northern Myanmar. Where should the story start? How about starting from when I was taken by Brother Hao to northern Myanmar? First, let me briefly introduce my name, Ah Piao. This name was given to me by Brother Hao. My real name is Zhao Ran, and I was an orphan raised by my adoptive parents. Besides, I won't go into detail about my previous events here. If you are interested in why I came to northern Myanmar before, please leave me a message and I will let you know. I remember it was a sunny and warm day, and under the guidance of Brother Howe, I followed him by plane from Kunming to Yangon, Myanmar. After getting off the plane, Hauga took a taxi on the roadside and had a conversation with the driver. The driver took us to a place similar to a food street. As I couldn't understand their conversation, sitting in the taxi, I just kept looking at this unfamiliar and somewhat old city in front of me. Is this really overseas? How is it completely different from what I think? Before coming to Myanmar, I searched online for some related travel guides, official promotional posters, and videos about Myanmar. But looking at the street in front of me, what I don't know is that I have arrived at an old street in China with a sense of time. What's wrong? After getting off the car, Hauga saw me in a daze and asked softly. I pursed my lips and whispered. Is this Myanmar? What's wrong? It feels so torn. To be honest, the distance between Myanmar, which is filled with gilded Buddha statues and magnificent palaces, and the one in my heart is too far. Don't always believe what's online, the reality of Myanmar is just like that. It's not as developed as they say. After listening to Brother Howe's words, I nodded. Then tentatively ask. Then you promised me a monthly salary of 20,000. If you're lying to me, I'll leave now. Later on, I realized how naive and ridiculous my threat, which had no killing power, was. Hauga glanced at me and solemnly patted my shoulder. It's just 20,000 yuan. Do I need to deceive you? Hauga spoke lightly with a hint of mockery in his words. Because I have seen Hauga's strength before, I naturally have great faith in his words. Chapter 2 Unfortunate Omens You are listening at NovelFull.audio Let's go. Let's eat something and find a place to rest. There will be a car coming to pick us up later tonight. Why is it late at night? I asked, and when I heard about it in the second half of the night, I couldn't help but feel a bit puzzled. Perhaps it was because I was often locked up in a small dark room by my stepparents since I was young, so the night was an indescribable fear and unease for me. It is also an ominous omen. Because they are too busy with work during the day now. Oh. Then I looked around again at the less bustling streets in front of me and took a deep breath. Take it as it comes. Until this moment, Brother Howe still didn't tell me what to do when he came here, but I still foolishly believed him. I followed Hauga into a restaurant, and the receptionist warmly greeted Hauga. Hauga, long time no see. Long time no see. As usual, hurry up and do it. I'm a bit hungry. Hauga skillfully greeted the front desk, indicating that he was a frequent customer here. Okay, just sit down and have a cup of tea. It will be ready soon. After seeing me on the front station, I froze and turned my head to take a look at Brother Hao. This. Hauga glanced at me and said to her, very similar, right. Her name is Ah Piao, she will work with me in the future. After Hauga finished speaking, the receptionist quickly said to me. Hello, Sister Piao. I was embarrassed and didn't know how to answer the conversation. 
I didn't know what they meant by their words, let alone why a girl who looked a little older than me would open her mouth and call me sister. So I could only nod and smile. Then I asked. Are you also Chinese? The other party smiled and replied. No, I am a descendant of Chinese. There are many people like this here. Like you, we not only speak Chinese, but also have the same lifestyle and dietary habits. That's it. I nodded, and the disappointment in my heart suddenly decreased by half. Instead, there was a sense of familiarity. After taking my seat, I continued to look around and then said to Brother Hao. No wonder it feels so similar to China here. I just found out that even billboards are written in prominent Chinese. This is the old street, a gathering place for Chinese people. That's it. After listening to it, I only found it very fresh. I couldn't believe that there were Han Chinese compatriots like us in another country. Forgive me for being a ground beetle, let alone going abroad. I never went abroad before. Are there also many compatriots in the park? For my question, Hauga wanted to laugh a bit, but he still answered seriously. They all come from China and, like you, have a dream of becoming rich. I nodded. That's great. Unexpectedly, Brother Hao sneered coldly. But I didn't care. I think the reason it's really good is because there is a group of people working hard together for a common dream of wealth. Isn't that a good thing? My thoughts this time are still very simple, even thinking about it makes me feel very happy and even want to laugh, but soon I can't laugh anymore. After dinner, according to the original plan, Brother Hao would take me to a hotel to rest, but just as we got up and left the restaurant, Brother Hao's phone rang and he answered directly. Along, what's wrong? Hauga, there's a situation on Blackskin's side. A few people ran away and he chased after them. I won't go to his place for now, so I'll go directly to your place, at most for half an hour. You're still on the old street, right? Yes. Then wait for me, Ah uh, Hui and I will be here soon. Okay, then I'll wait for you. Since Brother Hao is using hands.free mode, I naturally understand what Ah Lang is saying very clearly. This conversation confused me a bit. How many people ran away? What does it mean? Hao Gu hung up the phone and glanced at me, his eyes seeming to be a bit greedy. I don't know if it's my illusion or something, but I always feel like I've seen this kind of gaze somewhere before. Later on, I remembered that it was when my stepfather looked at me up and down every time I finished taking a shower after I reached adulthood. That almost perverted greed made me feel nauseous and restless every time I remembered it. However, soon I found out that compared to my stepfather, men in northern Myanmar were like wild animals in early spring. They seem to die from that kind of thing, so they are always eager to meet a woman. Brother Hao, I shouted to him. He immediately reverted back to his original state. Oh, what's wrong? Just now, Ulung said on the phone, what happened when a few people ran away. I whispered and my heart lifted slightly, feeling as if something was about to happen, but seeing Hauga's handsome and panicking face made me feel as if it wasn't. Oh, working in the park is quite tiring, and it's normal for people to be absent from work and run away frequently. Does it mean that once you start working, no matter how hard or tiring the job is, you can't leave, right? I asked in a low voice again, and then I suddenly realized that there were many things I hadn't had time to ask Brother Hao. I've been listening to Brother Hao all these days, and although he didn't tell me that there is gold everywhere here, it gave me the illusion that making money here seems to be a very easy thing. No, we are still very tolerant towards our compatriots. It's okay if we don't want to do it, but we need to pay a certain amount of liquidated damages. After all, we follow the rules and regulations. As the saying goes, no rules, no square. Some people, even if they are absent without permission, bring certain losses to the company and don't want to pay liquidated damages. How could such a good thing be? Although Hauga's explanation is reasonable and well-founded, I always feel like there are other meanings implied, but I don't have time to savor them. 
I briefly passed my mind and then asked. How is the penalty calculated? Why don't they want to pay it? Is it because it's very high? How go frowned? Not high, it's all within their affordability range, but they just don't want to give it. Oh, that's it. Then they really shouldn't be like this. Is that right? How finished speaking and looked at his watch. Since we still have to wait for a while, let me take you around for a stroll. How Gu said. I nodded, indicating how big my heart was. After How Gu settled the bill, he dragged my suitcase and took me for a walk on the old street for a while, during which he bought me a Rujiamo. I don't want it because I will already be full. But How Gu forced it on me. Try it, this Rujiamo has a really good taste. Let's see if it's the same as the ones in China. After hearing him say this, I picked it up and started nibbling on it. The taste was indeed good, and it seemed no different from the Rujiamo I had eaten before. Moreover, the taste was more crispy, and there was more tenderloin inside. Eating Rujiamo and looking at the eye dot catching Chinese billboards everywhere in front of me, I always feel like I'm still in China now. So there is always an illusion, is this really outside of Myanmar? Perhaps because of this, there is no sadness of leaving one's hometown at all, but rather full of expectations for the future. Here, there is everything, and even more so in the park, there are also things like sour and spicy noodles, potato noodles, and rice noodles that you like to eat. How good introduced himself to me while eating, but in fact, he had told me these words more than once. I almost memorized it. And as long as you take things seriously, you will live a very fulfilling life. I took over his words and said. He was stunned for a second after listening and then smiled. Not bad, not bad. I will answer quickly. Anyway, you're working as an assistant for me. You just need to follow my instructions in the future. Okay. After eating the cake, the sky had already darkened a lot. How's phone rang again. Have you arrived? Where is it? Okay, I'll come right away. After Hauga hung up the phone, he suddenly said seriously to me. Remember the things I've been telling you these days. Mmm. Follow me. Then Hauga pulled me back quickly. Chapter 3 Being insulted and owing something. You are listening at novelfull.audio. I followed behind Hauga for about a few minutes, and from a distance, I saw a box truck flashing on the roadside. To be honest, I would be dragged by Brother House so much. In my crazy mind, I always feel like a couple in a passionate relationship with Brother Howe. You should know that these days, except for our rest time, we are not together, and the rest of our time is inseparable, which makes me always have an illusion. I even think that encountering Brother Howe is destined, and I mistakenly believe that Brother Howe's hospitality towards me is clearly because he likes me, especially when he unconditionally treats me well and even takes me to make a fortune. Isn't that like? I think I can't think of a better reason besides that. Of course, it's mainly because Brother Howe is too handsome and I'm too promiscuous that can confuse my mind. Howe shouted to the man standing next to the truck smoking, waved and quickly walked over with me. Looking at the truck in front of me, my heart began to beat. Before I could figure it out, Hauga had already pulled me to the truck. Along Gopans. The man with curly hair who was just smoking looked at me up and down with a smile, and then raised his big finger at Brother Hau. Hauga, that's okay. This is really beautiful, why don't you give it to me later? Get lost, she will do things with me in the future. After hearing this, Along said. Oh, I understand now. Hauga, it's me who kept my mouth low. I'm sorry, this is my new sister dot in dot law all day long. When I hear their conversation, my mind instantly goes blank. What does that mean? I turned my head and glanced at Brother Hau. Hauga said to me lightly. I'll talk to you later. After speaking, the back door of the van was opened, and inside were more than ten women of my age curled up. At this moment, everyone is sleeping soundly. 
Are they all coming to work in northern Myanmar like me? Why can't you prepare a better car for us? But in this way, isn't the company very wealthy? I swallowed a mouthful of saliva and my heart lifted again. Hurry up and get in the car. These people are all illegal immigrants. If they are discovered by the police here, their lives will be in danger. Hauga whispered in my ear, and after hearing this, my heart pounded. I didn't have time to think about getting on the car quickly under Hauga's urging. After I got into the car, the van was immediately shut down. Fortunately, there was a light inside the van that was on, so I could see the facial features of every person inside the van clearly. But I immediately realized that there was something wrong with the situation. I didn't see clearly under the car just now, and only when I got up did I realize that their hands were all tied with ropes. At this moment, a thunderbolt sounded in my mind. Even if I sneak over, I wouldn't be bound by both hands and feet, right? This is not about going to work, it's clearly about being held hostage and kidnapped. Wake up, I slapped the girl closest to me with force. No matter how she was photographed, she didn't wake up, which made me even more puzzled. Did she get drugged? After thinking about this, I swallowed a mouthful of saliva again and shook the girl even harder. At this moment, I urgently wanted to wake her up because I needed to know what was going on. But no matter how shaken the girl was, she still refused to wake up until I pinched her hard and she woke up. The first thing she woke up to was holding me and sobbing, feeling both aggrieved and sad. Then I woke up the others in the same way, and their reaction was the same as that of the girl just now. I also started crying. I want to ask them what happened, but no one told me, everyone just kept moaning and crying. Is it really being kidnapped? At this moment, I remembered what Hauga had told me before, as if he had never told me what to do here before. Perhaps they cried too loudly, and the car suddenly stopped after driving for a while. Immediately, I heard someone knocking on the truck and cursing as they knocked. If you don't want to die, just give me some peace of mind. Are you deaf in your ears? But the more that person shouted, the more these people cried. Finally, the person named Ulung opened the back door of the carriage and glanced at the situation inside. Oh, really, she's all awake. It seems like the medicine isn't strong enough. All right, don't even cry anymore. If anyone wants to cry again, I'll drag her out and take care of her. After Ah Lang's words fell, although the crying inside the carriage decreased, they cried even more wrongly. I want to know what's wrong with them. I shouted at the person named Alung. What else can I do? I owe you something. Speak politely. What? Be civilized, you're making me laugh. Where's Brother Hao? I'm looking for Brother Hao. At this moment, countless question marks flooded my mind, and I needed to ask Hauga clearly. I need to figure out what's going on here. You want to see Brother Hao? Oh, wait until we reach the park. No, you can't call him over now. Damn it, Hauga is not here right now. Where can I shout to you? I see if you also owe me. After Ah Lang finished speaking, he wanted to rush up and drag me. As a result, a thin and black man beside him grabbed him. Alung, you forgot what Hauga said. Don't act recklessly. Alung Hutu looked at that person like a tiger. I'm not afraid, let me tell you, Ah Hui, there's no woman in the park that I dare not play with. Do you believe that even if I take care of her, Brother Hao will still not do anything to me? After finishing speaking, Ah Lang rushed up again to pull me. The fly stopped him again. You forgot about Io's situation. After Ah Hui finished speaking, Ah Lang nodded. Then point at me. You'd better calm it down for me, otherwise there will be good fruit to eat. Where has Hauga gone? I want to see him. Although I was scared by Alung's recent actions, I still want to see Brother Hao. I must figure out what's going on. Alung's actions just now are clearly hooligans. If I were to work with someone like him in the future, would have a strong desire to die. How do I know where he went? 
you shouldn't argue with me so much. Then he shouted to others. If I hear any of you moaning again, I'll make you scream enough. After speaking, Olong will close the door again. Wait a moment, we won't be going to any park anymore. Please send us back to our home country. I shouted, although I still didn't know what to do here at this moment, my intuition told me that it was definitely not as simple as what Hauga told me. This scene is more like kidnapping. If that's the case, I won't forgive Brother Hao even if I die. It's really despicable. You're not going to the park anymore. You're such a damn scallion. To be honest, you were all bought by our boss at a high price. In the future, your lives will belong to our boss. It's not so easy to leave. What do you mean? Although I haven't figured it out yet, I'm definitely not a fool, and this matter is definitely not easy. What does it mean? When you arrive at the park, you will naturally understand, or you can also ask them, isn't there anyone among them who knows? All right, I'll warn you again and give me a rest. After finishing speaking, Ah Lang closed the carriage door again. And the women inside the carriage began to cry again, only softly, and this crying made people even more distressed. At this moment, I am numb. That's what's going on. Didn't I come here to make a fortune? After a long time, when they were tired from crying, the girl who was first awakened by me leaned towards me. Crying softly to me. Sister, it seems like they are a bit afraid of you. Can you tell them to let me go? I don't want to go to any park or make any big money anymore. I just want to go home. My mother and I rely on each other for survival. If there were any ups and downs, my mother might not be able to survive. After she finished speaking, others leaned towards me with a pitiful face on their faces. Sister, there's also me. I was deceived by our boss. Our boss said he wanted me to come here for a business trip, but who knew he actually asked me to come here to commit fraud. That thing is illegal. If I had done that, I would never have been able to clean it up in my life. Chapter 4 Fraud You are listening at NovelFull.audio Doing fraud My mind is clouded again. But soon I found out what was going on. Originally, Everyone has been deceived, including me. The so dot called high salary is simply a scam. In other words, it means being pulled over to engage in online fraud. To put it better, it's called selling financial products, but in reality, it's just inducing customers to gamble online. Really? At this moment, my brain is blank, but I still hope it's not true. It's true. A girl wearing a black chipao sat in a corner of the carriage. I glanced at her. She continued to say. We have indeed been deceived. These people will take us to the park, where we will never have a chance to come out again. Afterwards, she weakly shared everything she knew with everyone. Only when you die there can you be liberated, otherwise you have to behave obediently like a dog. After she finished speaking, she felt a bit hopeless. How did you know? She sneered. The news about this place has been circulating throughout the country for a long time, don't you all know? I shook my head. I don't know if anyone else knows, but it's the first time I've heard about it. The reason for this may be related to my living environment. Some of us have never been out of the mountains in our lives and know nothing about things outside the mountains. What happens outside sometimes takes a long time for us to hear about. What if we just don't do what they say? I asked, and the woman sighed and said. Whether you have seen or heard of torture on TV or in history books before, there are also those you have not heard of. Anyway, no one will have a good ending. After she finished speaking, the others continued to wipe away their tears. Afterwards, she also talked about the sensational online blood slave incident, the fat sister incident, the Myanmar North Internet celebrity incident, and even the legend of cutting the waist without using anesthesia. After listening to her, at that moment, I felt like the sky was about to collapse. I began to savor the words that Hauga told me back then. It was still quite chaotic, 
but as long as I listened well and worked hard, life was still very smooth. You can think of things well, there is no turning back, and so on. Now thinking about it, it seems that every sentence is reminding me not to come here, but I rush forward like a fool, and at the same time, I secretly feel grateful that I have won the big prize. This incredible wealth has actually come straight at me alone. Now it seems that where wealth is, there is clearly a huge pit in front of me, and it is bottomless. At this moment, the girl next to me who woke up first said to me again. Sister, please help me. I beg you. I turned my head and glanced at her, but before I could speak, the woman sitting in a Chong Sam at the corner of the carriage spoke again. She can't save you, we're all the same. If she had a special identity, she wouldn't have been stuck in the carriage like me. I wanted to shake my head and tell her that I was here to work as an assistant for Hauga, but after some understanding, I realized that this was simply Hauga's cover. Because some of these people were deceived by Snake Head into claiming to be anchors, executives, and sales managers. In short, they all come with management positions, no matter how poor they are, they are still in the office. It was because they spoke so well that everyone was fooled. Just when I didn't know what to do, the car stopped again. Ulung opened the back door of the carriage again and shouted in a low voice. Little babies, are you all hungry? Do you want to have a meal? No one answered, but kept crying and hugging their heads. Never mind if you don't eat, just go hungry. Everyone is cheap, just like you. When you arrive at the park and don't leave for three days, we will assign you to tidy up the uniform and stick to it. As no one answered, Ah Lang felt a bit bored and said angrily, closing the door. Wait a moment, can you share some of the food with everyone? I can skip it, but they definitely need some to eat. Oh, you're quite righteous. Come on, if it weren't for Brother Howe's prior explanation, I would probably have been satisfied with someone like you several times. I didn't pay attention to Alung's provocation because I knew what I needed at this moment was to remain calm and composed in order to come up with a good solution. After Ah Lang gave Ah Hui some orders, Ah Hui took a bag of mantu and a box of mineral water and threw them directly into the carriage. Eat. Two mantu for one person and one bottle of water for one person. When we are full, we will continue on the road. Is that all you want to eat? I asked, although I grew up in the countryside and didn't eat anything good, mantu with mineral water is too cold. It's not as good as the big yellow dog my stepmother used to raise even though it's all leftover food with some meat dishes. Why can't it be difficult? Do you still want to eat abalone? I told you this is to help you adapt in advance. In the future, this will be your dining standard. Don't you all like to lose weight? I came to the park to help you lose enough weight. Within a month, everyone will have long legs. Ha ha ha. After finishing speaking, Ah Lang chuckled contemptuously, occasionally poking his head into the carriage and looking at it. It was as lewd as it seemed, and the sight was inevitably nauseating. After hearing Alung's words, my heart was filled with death. If the food and beverage standards were so poor, how could there be a high salary of twenty thousand? It was only then that I realized how naive I was. In fact, I couldn't say that Brother Howe was too good at deceiving, but I was too easy to deceive. I believed whatever he said and had no doubt about his words. Turns out all of this is fake. A good dot looking person is definitely not a bad person, not at all. If a good dot looking person is not bad, Tang Monk wouldn't have been captured by monsters time and time again. So a good dot looking person may not be a bad person, but it's not necessarily a good person. I let go of my guard at that time because Hauga wore that handsome face that made me nervous. I firmly believed in him, but he wanted to take his heart out of me. After Arung finished speaking, he lit a cigarette for himself and didn't rush to close the car door. Instead, he looked at us with a smile on his face. I wanted to scold him, but I was afraid he would be detrimental to me, so I decided not to say anything and sat down next to the girl next to me. After finishing smoking, Ulung turned around and splashed water. 
After finishing, he walked over and pulled the lock, saying. If you want to pee, hurry up and don't stop halfway after the car starts. When I heard that I could use the restroom, my mind suddenly came to me and I coughed lightly. Don't you need to use the restroom? After I finished speaking, I turned around and scanned all the people inside the carriage. The girl in a cheap house sitting in the corner of the carriage first understood the meaning of my words and stood up directly. At this moment, I completely saw her appearance and felt that she should be a little older than me, but her face was not inferior to anyone present. Of course, everyone present is indeed more and more beautiful, but the girl wearing a cheap how looks more elegant and has a more prominent figure. Chapter 5 Ah Lang, who plans to do beautiful things. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. I need it. After seeing her get up, the others also got up one after another. Along looked at it and waved his hand. Hurry up, it's really troublesome. Give you ten minutes. Have you watched that piece of wasteland? Let's go there and solve it. Don't play tricks on me. Ulung pointed towards the nearby wasteland and nodded to Ahui, who was beside him. Ahui then brought a handful of AK. Arung held AK in his arms. Let's talk about it first. If anyone plays tricks, I'll just take care of her on the spot. I was originally thinking of taking the opportunity to slip away, but my legs suddenly became weak. Fortunately, the woman in the black chipao noticed my abnormality and helped me. Then, a total of twelve girls walked towards the nearby grass. After walking a distance, the woman in the black chipao, who was certain that she would not be heard by Alung and the others, first spoke up. Sisters, it's fate for you to meet each other. I'm sure you don't want to be dragged to the park to be pigs. Sister, I don't want to. The girl next to me said, and everyone else responded. Since we don't want to, let's take a gamble. We continued walking while talking, until Alung behind us shouted and fired his gun as a signal. Everyone stand there for me, just pee there. If you go any further, I'll kill you all. Later on, I learned about Chipao sister's thoughts at that time. If Alung didn't stop us, she would lead us straight forward and walk far away, because the further we went, the more advantageous it was for us to escape. After a gunshot, all twelve of us girls were dumbfounded, standing in place like stone statues. Some of the girls were even more frightened and their legs were trembling uncontrollably. Chipao's sister was the first to react. Don't panic, everyone. Take a deep breath to slow down. Everyone follows suit. Afterwards, Chipao's sister turned around and shouted. Please turn your back to us. It is common for people to make such demands, but Ulung seems to be a bit impatient. Don't argue with me about whether you like to pee or not. Are you a thousand mile eye for me? Hold on to pee, if you don't, hold on to it and come back to me. The Chong Sam sister ignored and waved, and everyone lowered their bodies. Due to the height of the grass, everyone can be buried just below their heads in the grass. Everyone, listen to me. If we don't want to be piglets, our only way is to run. Due to time constraints, we won't introduce each other one by one. Let's talk about it when we have a chance. Our current goal is to procrastinate and run as far as we can. After this disaster, if we can escape from heaven by chance, we will be the sisters who have lived for a long time. If we can't die, we will die together. At this moment, Chipao's sister is like our backbone, and we all agree with what she says. And it's also very exciting. Sister, what we do is up to you. I don't have much backbone as a person. But I think what you said is too right. The girl in yellow clothes next to me said, while others also spoke. Sister, we all listen to you. Chi Pao nodded and made a shush gesture towards us. Then he stood up and shouted to a Wang in the distance. Brother Lang, I have a stomachache. Do you have any paper in your car? If so, could you please bring me some? I was a bit confused when I heard what Chi Pao's sister said. Sister, this is not good. I'm a bit stuttering. 
It's okay, I've seen this kind of thing many times before. I know what he likes and what he wants, and from my observation, they seem like just a gun. As long as we grab the gun from him, they won't do anything to us. Maybe they'll have to listen to us. After listening to Sister Chi Pao's words, my heart suddenly ignited with hope and I quickly asked. Sister, are you confident? As long as you're willing to listen to me, there's no problem. Listen, listen, we all listen to you. That's fine. After Chi Pao finished speaking, she looked around and then turned to look at Ah Lang in the distance. At this moment, Ah Lang had already started walking towards this direction with a flashlight. While walking, humming a tune, I guess I must be thinking of something beautiful in my heart. At this time, the sky is not particularly dark, and the western sky is still an orange-yellow. Coupled with the bright full moon, it has already hung up early. According to Chi Pao's sister's suggestion, after a little delay in subduing Ah Lang, we can take advantage of the darkness to escape from Xingtian. This is our only chance. Later, when I was caught back in the park, I found out that what Chi Pao's sister said was absolutely right. That was our only chance. Once lost, there will never be such a good opportunity in this lifetime. Unfortunately, we were unable to escape that time. The Chong Sam elder sister breathed a sigh of relief and continued. Remember that we are now grasshoppers tied to a rope. If we don't stick together, no one will escape. I will pretend to squat there for convenience later. When Ulung arrives, you can take advantage of his unpreparedness and knock him down. As long as you grab his gun, we will win. Don't be afraid. Since they don't treat us like humans, they must show no mercy on us. After Chi Pao finished speaking, she picked up a small stone and handed it to us. Who will knock him down? It's easy to hit him hard on the head, as long as you put in all your strength, you can definitely knock him unconscious. Everyone looked at each other and saw that no one stood up. I took a step forward and took the stone from Chi Pao's sister's hand. I'll do it. Chi Pao's sister glanced at me and then placed her hands on my shoulders. Good sister, it's up to you whether you achieve success or not. Mmm. I nodded solemnly. For things like fighting, I can be said to be the best at it. The reason why I can fight so hard is related to my upbringing environment. As an orphan, after I was adopted, my adoptive mother and father didn't treat me like a person, so they often beat me. My classmates at school also often bullied me, so I couldn't beat my adoptive parents because they were too strong. However, I still dared to fight against them one dot on point one with those students at school, sometimes even picking several of them. With more fighting, one becomes more experienced and naturally knows where it hurts the most. Later on, Brother Hao also told me that the reason why he valued me and tried every means to pull me to the north of Myanmar was because he witnessed my fight with ease. And I am a person who holds grudges very much. Just because Ulung was so aggressive towards me just now, I should give him some color to show him. Then all of us pretended to squat down as Chi Pao's sister said, and after finishing, we put on our pants and stood in place to rub around. Of course, there were also a few who really had some urgency to urinate, and we also solved it on the spot. Afterwards, we stood in the formation arranged by Chi Pao's sister and waited for Ulung's arrival. A Wang ran excitedly towards this side, with a lewd expression on his face, shouting from a distance. Who wants paper? The paper has arrived. Of course, if it's inconvenient, I can also help her wipe it. I spat my head in his direction and cursed. It's like livestock. Chapter 6 Ulung is knocked unconscious to the ground. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. The closer Ah Lang gets to us, the faster my heart beats. Actually, for me who used to fight a lot, this is nothing at all. But after listening to what Chi Pao's sister said and the consequences we might face if we fail this time, my palms still sweat a bit. At the same time, I cursed Hauga ten thousand times in my heart. If there was a chance, I would definitely beat him to his knees and beg for mercy. The idea actually hit my head. 
Of course, I also know that this is just a harsh remark. It's better to escape now than anything else. My voice was not very loud, only the two girls who were closer to me could hear me. They also whispered a few curses, and then looked at me with some concern. I nodded at them. Alung quickly walked up to us, in front of the girl in yellow clothes, and reached out to pinch her chin. What do you want? The girl in yellow pushed Awang away. What are you doing? Awang, who was pushed away, immediately raised his gun towards the girl in yellow. Want to rebel? Believe it or not, I'll shoot you to death. The girl in yellow was frightened and her pants instantly got wet to the legs. Then she burst into tears, and the other girls followed suit. After seeing it, Ah Lang walked forward and reached out to touch it. The girl in yellow went crazy and cried loudly, retreating. Ah Lang, on the other hand, smirked and placed his hand in front of him to sniff. It's this flavor, fragrant. When I arrive at the park, I will treat you well. Ha ha ha. I was about to open my mouth and scold Olung, but as I crouched in the nearby grass, Chipao's sister shouted. Brother Lang, just give me what I want. Olung turned his head and glanced at the Chong Sam sister squatting in the grass, then put away his gun. So it's you, the beauty. I also love your product very much. Since that's the case, when we arrive at the park, we'll start with you. I'll give you some paper, the beauty. As Olung spoke, he ran towards Chipao's sister. After Chipao's sister coughed, I immediately rushed behind Olung and fiercely smashed the stone in my hand towards Olung's head. With a scream, Olung fell to the ground and couldn't get up. Chipao's sister immediately jumped up and snatched the gun from Olung's hand. After hearing Ah Lang's screams in the distance, Ah Hui quickly rushed over and shouted. Brother Lang, what's wrong? No one answered. Ahui, who received no response, continued to shout. Brother Lang, are you okay? At this moment, I stood in place, panting heavily and my heart suddenly quickened. Sister, he won't die, will he? Chi Pao's sister held a gun, checked the person, and then carried it directly on her shoulder. Don't worry. It's okay, but it won't be long before you wake up. What should we do now? I asked, and others also looked a bit scared and uncertain, but they all instantly understood what was happening at this moment. Then, just when everyone didn't know what to do, Chi Pao's sister shouted to Ahui in the distance. Huaij, Langa fell. He hit his head on a stone and the situation is not very good. He probably needs to be taken to the hospital. What, what's going on with this product? I'll come right away. Ah Hui put away the dagger in his hand and ran towards this side. Although it was already dark by now, under the bright moonlight, the dagger in Ah Hui's hand emitted a particularly dazzling cold light. Taking advantage of this emptiness, Chi Pao's sister called on us to quickly take off Alung's coat, tear it into strips of cloth with the dagger on Alung's body, and then simply twist it into a rope. She tied the unconscious Alung tightly, and then stuffed Alung's socks into his mouth. I don't know if it's because Ah Lang's socks smell too strong. As soon as he put them on, Ah Lang woke up inside and struggled to make a whining sound. At this point, Ah Hui was already very close to us, and he probably heard it. He immediately reached out and touched the knife pinned behind him, then made a defensive gesture. Brother Lang, what's wrong with you? Upon seeing this, Chi Pao's sister picked up a stone from the side and slammed it fiercely towards Olung's head again. Olung fainted again. Immediately, Chi Pao Jie stood up and walked out with a gun in her arms, facing Ah Hui. Stop! Ah Hui suddenly became foolish at this moment. Ah Hui doesn't give people that unpleasant feeling. Although he may not be considered handsome, he doesn't give the impression of being a bad person. Throw the knife in your hand to the ground, hold on. Otherwise, I'll shoot you to death. I saw this posture with my own eyes for the first time, and at that moment, I felt like Chi Pao's sister was our hero. After seeing this, Ah Hui threw the knife onto the ground and obediently raised his hand above his head. 
Chi Pao's sister gave me a wink, and after understanding, I went forward and tied a Huey's hand behind me with the remaining cloth that had just been tied to Ah Lang. To prevent Ah Hui from breaking free, I even made a snap. During this period, Ah Hui didn't say a word and was very cooperative. After being tied tightly, Chi Pao's sister walked up to Ah Hui and said, Huaij, we don't make things difficult for you, but don't make things difficult for us either. We were all deceived, so you can send us back. We will definitely repay you well if there is a chance in the future. After hearing this, Ah Hui sighed. Beautiful woman, you can't escape at all. This is Wa State, and we will arrive at the concentration area of the park in less than half an hour along the road. It's impossible for you to escape from here. Unless Brother Hao sends someone to escort you, it's even harder than climbing to the sky. Moreover, as far as I know, Brother Hao is impossible to send you back. Although you were all deceived, Brother Hao paid for it. Stop talking nonsense, if you don't send us back, I'll kill you now. Chi Pao's sister has a big sister-like demeanor, which is much more imposing than me pointing at a small thug's nose and claiming to kill him on the street. Beautiful woman, what I said is true. And if I really helped you, whether you can escape or not, I won't be able to go back. Isn't this all the same to me? Stop talking nonsense, will you just say, help, or help? If you don't help, I'll kill you now. And this is not a difficult thing for you, so you can drive us back. When we reach the China-Myanmar border, we'll figure out a solution ourselves. Chi Pao's sister continued to threaten. At this moment, Huey's face was filled with an expression of helplessness. Sister, I can't really help you. You may not know that there are rules here. Cars can only enter and not leave at night to prevent anyone from sneaking out in the dark. Moreover, if caught, we will have no good outcome. Stop talking nonsense. As Chi Pao Jie spoke, she slapped Ah Hui in the face. After a loud slap, Huey's face instantly turned red. I really didn't lie to you. As soon as she finished speaking, Chi Pao's sister slapped her face again. After Ah Hui said more, she slapped again until Ah Hui stopped talking. A few people even came forward to persuade Chi Pao's sister. Sister, why don't we just forget about it? Chi Pao's sister glared at them. If you don't want to die, you have to do this. If I'm tired, you can continue to fan until he is willing to take us out of here. Chapter 7 Played by Ah Hui you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Seeing that others remained unmoved, I stood up directly. The main reason I supported Chi Pao's sister was that I felt she was right. Moreover, if Ah Hui refused to take us away, even if we had guns and cars in this unfamiliar Wa state, it would be of no use. At the same time, I also hold a grudge against Brother Hao. I vented all my anger on Ah Hui and after slapping him several times in a row, my hands hurt. Afterwards, it seemed that the others were also convinced by Chi Pao's sister, and going up one by one to confront Ah Hui was just a scolding. After a chaotic fight, Ah Hui, who was beaten to a pig's head, finally nodded and said he was willing to take us out of Wa State, but he couldn't guarantee that we would be able to flee back to China. Chi Pao's sister didn't say anything about this, just asked him to quickly drive us away. Afterwards, Chi Pao and I sat in the driver's cab, responsible for watching Ah Hui drive. We had originally planned to divide the work and become guards, but Chi Pao looked at the few girls in front of us and shook her head, feeling a bit uneasy. So I simply gave up on this idea. After everyone got on the car, Ah Hui, urged by me and Chi Pao's sister, started the car and turned around to drive back and forth. At first, Ah Hui wanted to bring Ah Lang with him, but was rejected by Chi Pao's sister. As we had both knives and guns in our hands, Ah Hui could only obediently obey, and he had just witnessed our unwavering determination to achieve our goals. After driving for an hour, I started to feel a bit drowsy, but I still tried to pinch my thighs to keep myself awake. After passing, the car arrived at a checkpoint and was stopped by two fully armed warlords. My heart instantly rose to my throat, 
and I glanced at the Chong Sam lady beside me. At this moment, Chi Pao's sister said to Ah Hui with a calm and indifferent expression on her face. Rush over. Ah Hui swallowed a mouthful of saliva. What? Are you deaf? I'll have you rush over. Chi Pao's sister said again, although her voice was very quiet, it seemed like an inviolable decree. Ah Hui turned to Chi Pao's sister and said. Sister, actually there's no need for this. If we rush over, they will definitely drive after us, and there are other levels ahead. If you believe me, I will explain the reason to him once, and they will let us go. I'll say it again, rush over. Chi Pao's sister raised her voice slightly. Chi Pao's sister pointed her gun at the back of Ah Hui's head as she spoke. At this moment, those two warlords have already begun to walk towards us. I patted the shoulder of Chi Pao's sister. Sister, why don't you trust him once? Chi Pao's sister turned her head to look at me and sighed. Put away the gun and say to Ah Hui. I hope you don't play tricks on me. Don't worry. It won't happen. Two warlords knocked on the window and negotiated with Ahui. As they were speaking Burmese, we didn't know what they were saying. However, during their conversation with him, the two warlords kept looking at us with their heads up, then smiled and pointed their big fingers at Ahui. They then waved their hands to signal that we could leave. The process went surprisingly smoothly. After the car started again, Chi Pao's sister aimed her gun at the back of a Huey's head again. What did you say to them just now? Sister, can you put down the gun first? Please, I didn't say anything. I just said that you two are my women, and they praised me for having good luck. The reason why they can let us go is because I said I am Hauga's person, and Hauga still has some weight here. They dare not offend me. But when you leave, I'm afraid I won't have a good life. You can also come with us. I said. Ah Hui sneered. Do you want to go back to my home country and sit in jail? If I don't go back, people like me live with their heads in their mouths. Wherever they go, they count. After hearing Ah Hui's words, I suddenly felt that Ah Hui was somewhat pitiful and pitiful. So I asked him. How did you get down this path? After thinking for a moment, Ah Hui began to tell me his story. He said he was also deceived, but after coming here, he did too many things that he shouldn't have done, so he couldn't go back with dignity. He said he always feels that the moon on the fifteenth day of the lunar calendar in Myanmar is not as round as in China, and the water is not as sweet as in China. He also said that he often dreams of the mountains and rivers in his hometown. As we spoke, the atmosphere began to become subtle, and my Chi Pao sister and I gradually lowered our vigilance. After driving for about an hour, a new level appeared ahead. At this moment, Ah Hui suddenly felt a stomach ache and parked the car on the roadside, flashing twice. He said he wanted to go for convenience. Chi Pao's sister sat up straight in an instant, holding the gun in her arms. Don't go. Sister, you really don't have to be so nervous. I'll be back soon. I've already met you, and I promise you won't play tricks. Just trust me. After hearing Ah Hui say this, I nodded and said to Chi Pao's sister. Sister, don't trust him again. Chi Pao's sister hesitated for a moment. If you dare to leave my sight, I will immediately shoot. Rest assured. At this point, it was already very dark. Fortunately, the moon was bright enough, and under the moonlight, objects within a dozen meters of the line of sight could still be seen clearly. After Ah Hui got off the car, he went straight to the roadside. As he took off his pants, I felt like I was turning my head and not looking anymore, but Chi Pao's sister stared fixedly. I don't think Ah Hui will play any tricks, so I closed my eyes and squinted for a while. After a while, a faint sound of footsteps came through, and the Chong Sam sister cursed fiercely. This beast dares to deceive us. I sat up directly. A pile of dark figures ran straight ahead. Can you drive? Chi Pao asked, and I shook my head. 
hurry up and get off the car to run. After hearing this, I quickly opened the car door and jumped down. Where's Ah Hui? I accidentally let him run away just now. After Chi Pao Jia jumped out of the car, the two of us quickly walked around to the back of the car and opened the carriage door. Chi Pao Jia shouted to the women inside who were sleeping. Don't sleep, run quickly. Then Chi Pao's sister ran with us towards the grass by the roadside. And behind him came waves of shouting. Stop and don't run, you can't run away. Don't let us catch you, if we catch you, you'll be dead. The more they shouted, the harder we ran, with our exposed skin being scraped by grass that grew as tall as humans, causing a burning pain. I wanted to stop and relax, but the Chong Sam sister kept shouting. Don't stop, hurry, run, or we'll be dead. After running for a while, we couldn't move at all, but the group of people chasing us behind us seemed to have beaten chicken blood, and I also heard the barking of a dog. Chapter 8 Internal Strife After Being Recaptured You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Sister, let's take a break. Do you want to die? Chi Pao's sister roared angrily. Sister, don't we have guns? I don't know how to use it, can you? What? It turned out that Chi Pao's sister had been desperately trying to disguise herself all night. I swallowed a mouthful of saliva. Sister, it shouldn't be difficult. Just tie it up and you can hit it. Are you sure? That's how it's portrayed on TV. Sister Chi Pao gave me a white glance, feeling a bit helpless, but there was no better way. Okay, trust you once. At this point, we have reached the top of a soil slope. There happened to be a stone there as a cover, so we immediately ran behind it and hid. Then Chi Pao's sister started studying the gun in her hand, and a few minutes later, as the dog's barking approached, my heart was pounding uncontrollably. Sister, how about it? It seems possible. With the return of Chi Pao's sister, my heart rose to my throat. Really? It should be. Chi Pao's sister pulled the bolt on the gun and made a crisp sound. I was instantly excited. The same goes for others. Sister, shoot any gun you want. As long as they know we have a gun in our hands, they shouldn't be chasing us so hard. Chi Pao nodded, and everyone else covered their ears. After a few seconds, we didn't wait for the deafening gunshot. Chi Pao Jie stood up and threw the AK in her hand directly onto the ground. Run. There are no bullets in here, it's empty. What? Run, hurry up and run. If you don't run again, you'll be dead. So our group continued to run aimlessly in the previous direction. After running for a while, Chi Pao's sister gasped for breath and shouted. Everyone, listen to me. Running like this is not a solution. Let's split up and run. Whether we can run away or not is up to fate. After Chi Pao finished speaking, she continued to run, but the others did not run separately but continued to follow Chi Pao. No matter what Chi Pao's sister said, everyone recognized her. The ending can be imagined. After a long time, when we were completely unable to run, Chi Pao's sister burst into tears and cursed at us. We were already being chased and surrounded by people behind us. Are you sick? I told you all about it, so we can all finish it. Do you believe it? I can understand Chi Pao's sister's feelings at this moment very well. I intentionally pulled the girl in yellow to run in another direction, but she refused to let me alone not afraid of opponents like gods, but afraid of teammates like pigs. This statement is absolutely true. Later, more than once, I thought that if I had changed to someone else, under the command of Chi Pao's sister, I might have run away. After we were surrounded, those didn't do anything to us. But he brought us all handcuffs and handcuffs, and then escorted us back to the first car. At this moment, Ah Hui was standing beside the car smoking. Seeing this scene, I instantly understood that he was actually a fallen person from the ends of the earth. The reason why Ah Hui just said so tragically was just to delay time. Yes, his car noticeably lowered while telling the story. 
when we were brought before him. A warlord-like person said to Ah Hui. Ah Hui, I caught the person for you, but I'm not a charity organization. My brothers can't work for nothing. Ah Hui threw away the cigarette but in his hand and said with a smile. Brother you, don't worry, I just told brother how that when you go back to Square Street to arrange, the other benefits you mentioned will definitely be indispensable. First of all, let me explain Square Street here. Square Street is part of the park and has a variety of delicious food, gathering most of the delicious food in China. In addition, there are restaurants, casinos, hotels, karaoke bars, clubs and other entertainment facilities available. This also includes clothing stores, jewelry stores, tattoo stores, supermarkets, and so on. Square Street can be said to be the most unique existence of the park. The main reason for its existence is to tell people in the park not to envy the outside life. There are both those outside and those outside. The second is to leave the money in the park, as the saying goes, North Burma earns money, North Burma spends money, and North Burma spends money. Here, as long as you have achievements, you can live a more fulfilling life than anyone else, and then you will be the ancestor. I have seen many highly performing executives who spend their days holding a big-chested girl on either side of Square Street, frequently going in and out of bars and clubs, and living a life of extravagance and extravagance. Over time, they become numb and really don't want to go back. You understand me, kid. I'll leave that person to you. If you need anything later, call me again. Okay, thank you very much, brother you. Afterwards, we were all driven back into the carriage by a group of warlords. As the carriage door was closed, my heart turned to ashes at this moment. No wonder Ah Hui kept saying that escaping from here was even more difficult than reaching the sky. The local militia and warlords collude with each other, and no matter how they escape, they cannot escape this circle. When we passed the first level tonight, I believe Ah Hui had already discussed with those people, so we really can't trust anyone. After getting on the car, Chi Pao's sister sat there foolishly, sighing deeply, while the others continued to cry. The biggest difference between Ah Hui and Ah Lang is that Ah Hui is not as abnormal as Ah Lang. At least when everyone is crying, he won't get annoyed, but instead drives his own car when everything happens. After everyone cried for a while, a few girls began to complain. If I had known earlier, we wouldn't have been able to escape. Why do we have to overestimate ourselves? That's right, I'm soaked all over now, sticky and uncomfortable. My body has been cut by the grass, it hurts me so much. The Chong Sam sister ignored this. The girl in yellow clothes couldn't stand it and said it directly. Who knew it would be like this? If we were to run separately soon, it would be great, and there would be two of them who could have run away but still came over and opened the door for us. If we couldn't run away, it was our own lack of ability, and we couldn't blame anyone. I glanced at the girl in yellow and suddenly became very fond of her. At first, I thought she was a coward, but now I realize that although she is timid, she is also quite righteous, knowing what is right and what is wrong. After she finished speaking, the others stopped talking. Then Chi Pao's sister spoke up. If we run, there may still be a glimmer of possibility. If we don't run, there's not even a glimmer of possibility. I apologize for not being able to lead everyone out. After Chi Pao finished speaking, the air instantly solidified. After a moment, Chi Pao's sister spoke again. We are also the sisters who died tonight. Maybe we can get to know each other. After we go to the park, I hope we can take care of each other if possible. My name is Li Mei. I used to be a sales supervisor in a foreign trade company. I nodded after listening. Chapter 9 Li Mei is forced by a lung. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Seeing that no one spoke, I took over the conversation and was about to say my name was Zhao Ran, but suddenly remembered Hauga's previous advice. However, after hesitating for a moment, I still said it. My name is Zhao Ran, I am an orphan and a homeless person. I think Li Meijie is right. 
no one can say for sure what kind of days we will face in the future, but of course, having someone to take care of each other is naturally good. After I finished speaking, the girl in yellow next to me said. My name is Lin Ching, and Hai Dada is a sophomore. Then others also introduced themselves. My name is Lu Chiao, and I am currently in my third year at Haizhou University. The girl who would complain first said. Ten minutes later, all the introductions were finished, and I kept reading their names in my heart and writing down their looks. I thought that if there were such a group of sisters taking care of each other, it would not be too difficult. Although I don't know what kind of terrifying days are waiting for us. Li Mei, Lu Qiao, Lin Qing, Lu Shuang, Wang Shan Mei, Zhang Wenwen, Song Qian, Tang Feifei, Hu Tong Tong, Wang Dan, and I are eleven people in total. It is said that there should have been one before I got on the car, but I don't know why she was picked up halfway. As for where she was picked up and what she did, no one knows, and no one knows her name. Among these eleven people, except for me and Li Mei who are not college students, the other nine are all college students. And they were all deceived by the same intermediary company, all using the same tricks to attract high salaries. Besides being students, they also have one thing in common, which is that they are more and more beautiful. After listening, Li Mei immediately started using foul language. These animals have reached out their hands to the students' heads. What a despicable thing. After a long silence, Lin Qing asked. Li Jie, can't we really go back? As he spoke, two glistening tears slid down his face. Don't be so dejected, take a step and see. Maybe you can escape back, but it's hard to say. But now we can't even escape from Wa State. It's even harder to escape when we reach the park. After Lin Qing finished speaking, the others continued to sob. It's okay, living people can still hold their urine to death. There will be a way, right? After Li Mei finished speaking, she looked at me. I nodded somewhat unconfident. Yes. After all this fuss, I felt like I might have no hope of escaping, so my nod also seemed a bit pale and powerless. Afterwards, Li Mei said. In short, we must be good and remember that living is better than anything. If we have the opportunity, what we can escape is still to continue to escape. Everyone else nodded as well. After a while, Li Mei pulled the mantu and water from the corner of the carriage to the front and gave them to everyone. I've been tinkering all night, I'm hungry. Let's eat some. It's not even certain if I'll have anything to eat in the future. Although I will eat in the afternoon, I am still feeling hungry now. Maybe I was hungry and thought that mantu was particularly delicious. After eating mantu, I took a few more mouthfuls of water. Then I felt sleepy and we slept next to each other. We were almost awakened by a loud opening of the door. After the carriage door was opened, it was already dawn. It was not Ah Hui who opened the door for us, but Ah Lang with gauze wrapped around his head. At this moment, Olung had a posture of wanting to eat people. I suddenly woke up when I was still feeling a bit sleepy. I turned my head to look at the others, whose faces also showed a hint of fear. Unconsciously, I moved back and curled up into a ball. You wave hooves, what's so special? Even I dare to plan, I really want to die. You want paper, right? I'll give you a good check. Have you wiped it clean? After finishing speaking, Ah Lang jumped onto the car and pulled out the handcuffs that had grabbed Li Mei. It felt like he was dragging a dead dog, with extremely rough techniques and no gentleness at all. Lin Qing Gang is about to get up. He was slapped hard by Ah Lung. Get lost, I'll deal with you tonight. What are you doing? I shouted. Ah Lung pointed directly at me and roared. If you owe me something, just say it. I don't care what your background is, just give me one more growl, and I'll make you feel the same as her. At this moment, Olung is like a mad dog catching anyone and biting them. Ah Hui patted Ah Lang's shoulder on the side. Brother Lang, why don't we just forget about it? We'll be in the park soon. 
If there's anything else, let's talk about it in the park. Get out of here for me, really. Do you know that I almost died in that wasteland last night, these scoundrels? I must teach them a lesson. After Arung finished speaking, he stripped Li Mei's clothes in front of all of us and forcibly did that. During this period, Li Mei fiercely bit A Lang, but was knocked unconscious by A Lang's stick. After finishing, she was slapped twice to wake up Li Mei and then thrown in again. Throw in a packet of paper by the way. Didn't you need paper? I gave you a good wipe. If it's not enough, just speak up and I'll make sure you feel comfortable. Afterwards, Olung grabbed Lin Qing's ankle handcuffs and dragged them to his face. Say, is it you who hit me? Lin Qing cried and shook her head non-stop. Special, I think it's just to take good care of me tonight, otherwise I'll sell you to the black market to pick you up. It's cheap, but I like you. No matter how awesome you are, when you arrive at the park, I can tidy you up and be obedient. When you arrive at the park, you're all my slaves. If you don't listen, you'll die. After speaking, Lin Qing forcefully pushed and shoved, and Lin Qing rolled in directly. I stepped forward and wanted to confront Alung. As a result, Alung directly took out a dagger and pointed it at me. I'll ask if you want to die, who do you think you are? If you want to be like her, I'll make it happen to you. Alung angrily pointed at Li Mei lying motionless on the side and shouted at me. I gave her a fierce glare, then looked around and found that there were no weapons to use. So if I had to work hard, I would only give her a head. Of course, I didn't want to die, so at this moment, I was hesitant. Brother Lang, you can leave now. Ah Hui, standing next to Ah Lang, whispered softly. A Lang glanced at a Hui and took out a key from his pocket, handing it to a Hui. You go drive my car, I'll drive this car. Okay, Brother Hao has urged me several times. Don't delay the process. Are you teaching me how to do things? Ah Lang roared at Ah Hui. Ah Hui shook his head. Brother Lang, I'm just reminding you not to delay. Get lost, I don't need you to teach me. Ah Hui took the key and left directly, while Ah Lang viciously scrutinized the eleven of us before closing the door and starting the car. After the door was closed, I took a deep breath and walked up to Li Mei, who was still lying motionless in the same place, holding her hand, Sister, cheer up, we still have to go back. Li Mei seems to be my hope to escape from the clutches. If she falls, my hope will be shattered. Although we only know each other for less than a day, at this moment, I have 100% trust in her. Adding to what she had heard before and everything she has experienced so far, it is not an exaggeration to describe this place as hell on earth, so even if there is a chance, one must die back. Later on, I realized how difficult it was for the people in the park to return to these two words. If they were tricked into living in the park in northern Myanmar, they would either live a miserable life or be drained of all their value and become a lonely soul. Lin Qin also leaned over and said to Li Mei. Yes, sister. You are the backbone of all of us. If you defeat us, our hopes will be completely shattered. Lu Qiao, standing beside me, suddenly said to me. That Zhao Ran, it would be you who knocked Lang Gu down with a stone. If he wants to ask, I will definitely be honest. Don't blame me then. I saw her, and the fire inside me was slightly tumbling. What kind of sisters who had lived a life was just bullshit. I wanted to sell out before I had a chance, flipping my face was faster than flipping a book. I sighed and then said something very unfriendly to her. As you please. Anyway, I told you. I won't speak any more. Based on my previous temperament and personality, I quite wanted to give her a beating, but now I feel it's really unnecessary. Li Mei lay in place for a long time before sitting up with the help of me and Lin Qing, and said to me calmly. If my husband finds out, will he forgive me? I love my husband very much. We were together in high school and have been together for thirteen years now. Chapter 10 Better sleep on the floor than be a boss. 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. I think this should be the reason for knocking down Li Mei. Even though she knew she would be sent to the mortal hell in the park, she still worked hard to figure out how to escape, fearless of difficulties. So in my opinion, she is not afraid of anything, the only thing she is afraid of is that her husband who has been in love for many years will despise her and not forgive her. Yes, if my brother dot in dot law finds out, he will not only forgive you, but also make that beast pay the price. I feel sorry for him, really sorry for him. After Li Mei finished speaking, she burst into tears. To be honest, I have never been in a relationship before and I don't know how to advise on such things, but it can be seen that Li Mei really loves her husband. Afterwards, I simply stopped persuading and held her hand tightly with Lin Qing. After Li Mei finished crying, she sneered lightly and said, It's not certain whether I can live or not, why do I care about these things? After Li Mei finished speaking, she took the hands of me and Lin Qing and said, Remember, no matter what happens, you have to do everything you can to survive and don't show any signs. Life here is not easy. Lin Qing and I exchanged a glance and nodded. When the carriage door was opened again, Ulung dragged us down with a group of burly thugs. Then they escorted us into the park. Langa, why don't you drive the car in? These people probably have cramps in their legs after sitting in the car for so long. Taking two steps is still beneficial for their health. When Ah Lang was pulling Li Mei, he encountered Li Mei's resistance and then beat her up. Finally, Ah Hui stepped forward and took it from Ah Lang's hand. Brother Lang, Brother Hao has told me to be gentle with newcomers. You are always so rude. It might not be good if Brother Hao finds out. Be gentle, I almost died in the hands of this wave hoof. Why didn't you say that? Brother Lang, let's talk about anything later when we meet Brother Hao. Although Ahui does not speak of integrity, he always feels that Ahui is not too bad. Afterwards, driven by the thugs, we followed Ahui into the gate of the park and walked straight through two buildings. After passing through a factory building similar to a domestic blue iron sheet factory, we arrived at a three-story building resembling a private villa. I looked at everything in the park with my spare light, and I didn't know if I thought I had arrived at an industrial park in China. It has to be said that the construction in this park is indeed quite complete, with ponds and grasslands in the distance. While we were standing in place waiting, a coach-like person on the nearby basketball court was rhythmically whistling and shouting slogans with a group of people. What is our slogan? The people behind shouted in unison. No matter how poor you are, don't work, no matter how hungry you are, don't eat. What is our ideological outlook? As long as you can figure out how to become rich sooner or later. What is our ideal? I'd rather be a boss than sleep on the floor. Great, speak up and shout three times in unison. Then those people ran and shouted as if they had been beaten with chicken blood. After shouting, the whistler continued to shout. Do you want to shine on the lintel? The runner shouted. Think. Do you want to change your destiny? Think. What should we do then? Work hard, work boldly, and win millions of dollars in wealth. Very good. Perhaps because their slogans were too catchy, the thugs who escorted us, as well as Ah Lang and Ah Hui, were also attracted. Ah Lang couldn't help but smile at Ah Hui and say. This new white supervisor is great. He's a complete set, truly someone who has worked as a lecturer in an insurance company, and he does have some skills. Not bad, not bad. It's okay, isn't it? What does it mean, okay? I think it's very good. After Arung finished speaking, he let out a low swoosh to the leading white supervisor from afar. Lao Bai, he would rather sleep on the floor than be a boss. Alongside shouting, Ah Lang imitated the way those people clenched their fists just now, that despicable demeanor that anyone would want to give him a beating. Director Bai turned his head and glanced at him, ignoring him. Oh, this is hating me. Didn't I just have a good sleep with his old friend? 
And he was very satisfied with his old friend, and he screamed loudly. Are you saying that the supervisor is jealous of me because his skills are not as good as mine? After finishing speaking, Ah Lang burst into laughter. Everyone in the park doesn't hate you, sometimes I even want to hit you. You should calm down in the future. Even if you know it's someone else's good looks, you won't let it go. It's just here. You don't even know how many times you've died when you go elsewhere. After Ah Hui finished speaking, he took out his phone and dialed Hao Ge's phone number. Hauga, I have obtained it. Okay, okay, then I'll bring someone over directly, right? Okay. Yes, I'm already downstairs. Good then we followed Ah Hui into the courtyard of the villa and went to the lobby on the first floor. We stood there and waited for a few minutes before Hauga came down from upstairs. I looked up at him intently, but we didn't see each other all night. However, I felt that his unfamiliarity made me feel terrible. I kept asking in my heart. Is this really the guy I used to know who took me to eat all the delicacies and explore all the mountains, rivers, lakes, and seas? Is that right? And it seems like I've never known him before. If I knew he was that heinous demon, would I still foolishly believe his lies? After Hauga went downstairs, his eyes swept over each of us. When he saw me, there was no difference, not even a half-second pause. Originally, I had some expectations for Hauga, thinking that I might be different from others. But at this moment, I suddenly realized that everything was the same. In his eyes, I am the same as them, both pray. After surveying, Hauga sat down on the nearby reception sofa and said to Alung. Alung, I heard about last night's incident, why was it so careless? Hauga, it's this wave hoof. I've just taught it a lesson, and when I bring it back, I'll tighten my skin. I think it's just itching. Hauga glanced at Li Mei, whose face was covered in injuries. I've told you so many times. Be gentle with new people, but you just don't listen. If I turn around and hear a new person accusing you of something black, I can't spare you. Hao Gu finished speaking. Lin Qing spoke directly. Hao Gu, that Ah Lang retaliated against Li Jia on the way and raped her. Please make up for Li Jia. And he even tampered with me. I don't know if Lin Qing is reckless or foolish. In my eyes, officials protect the people, and bad people help bad people. Therefore, in my opinion, her report is meaningless. In the future, Alung may hold a grudge and retaliate against her. Hauga glanced at Lin Qing. Is that right? Alung, you've gone too far with this. This is the second time, but it's too late. I'll give you another chance. If there's another time, don't talk to me. After listening, Arung nodded. Brother Hao, don't worry, I won't do it again next time. After Ah Lang finished speaking, he turned his head and glared fiercely at Lin Qing, as if telling him that you were done. I was not surprised by Hauga's reaction at all. At this moment, I was just a little worried about how this somewhat abnormal Ah Lang would target Lin Qing. But soon I realized that my worries were unnecessary because I couldn't even care about myself. Where else is there to bother with those things? Give me all their information. After Hauga finished speaking, Arung took out a file bag from behind and handed it to Hauga. Brother Hao, it's all here, but I didn't have the one you brought. Hauga took the file bag and said. She doesn't need it. Okay, okay. After reading through the information, Brother Hao pointed to me and Li Mei. The two of them stay, take the others to the new room for training and work. Don't worry, Brother Hao. Within three days, the designated training team will be upright. After Arung finished speaking, he took a puff of his cigarette and said to Lin Qing beside him. Let's go, take you to the training. Lin Qing turned his head and glanced at Hauga. Hauga. At this moment, Lin Qing suddenly shook off Ah Lang and ran to Hao Gu, kneeling down with a thud. What's up? Hauga asked calmly, with a cold and icy tone in his words. Alung said directly. 
what can she do? It's obvious that her skin is itching. This is a disease that needs to be treated. I happen to have the ability to revive with clever hands. It won't be long before she can recover immediately, ha uh -huh. After Ah Lang finished speaking, he dragged Lin Qing away without any resistance from him. I really want to stop it, but now I know better than anyone that we are just mud bodhisattvas crossing the river and unable to protect ourselves. No one can do it for anyone. Li Meiji beside me reached out and grabbed my arm, then shook her head at me.